Hi folks, couldn't be more excited because I'm about to go spearfishing. The weather's been absolutely horrendous for probably about three weeks. Don't think I've dived in three weeks. But finally, the wind's still blowing hard, but it's suddenly swung round and it's blowing offshore. Still a good ground swell, about four to six feet. So it's gonna be quite, quite a lot of movement on the bottom, but I'm hoping there's gonna be some visibility here. And we're now November the 1st, so I'm also hoping there should be some good fish, um, which is still feeding hard before they're gonna migrate offshore. So, Ooh, couldn't be more excited really. I'll take you in the water and we'll see what we can find. Swimming about 50 yards out into the cove, I'm really pleasantly surprised by the visibility. It's about six to eight meters. A little bit cloudy due to the storms, but this is pretty good. My first dive is always an espeto. I go to the bottom and I just wait to see what fish are active in the water column. There's some really nice stringweed here, so I'm not surprised to see some nice fat mullet coming in. Some of these are absolutely huge, probably about two kilograms possibly more. I don't need to shoot one of these mullet right now. I can shoot one later without having to tow it round for the rest of the dive, but it's really good to know that they're here over this stringweed. You can also see from the stringweed that there's a fair current running, but I've looked at the tidal charts and I know that I'm gonna be able to get the current up the coast and then ride it back a bit later on. Having seen what's going on in the shallows, I decide to swim about 100 meters out. My plan is to dive over the kelp, and I'm hoping to see some big pollock down there. I reached the bottom in a beautiful kelp forest in exactly 15 meters. You can see I am looking all around me because these pollock can just emerge from nowhere at any moment and you need to be ready to turn your gun on them to take the shot. All it takes is just a 10 second wait for this beautiful nine pound pollock to glide in towards my spear. I'm really, really happy with this shot. There was quite a lot of movement on the bottom of the swell, but I managed to grasp the spear gun really firmly and get the spear where I wanted it. You can see, I think it's gone straight through the brain of the fish and it just doesn't move a muscle. Now pride often does come before a fall, swimming out a bit further and dropping down to about 18 meters, an even bigger pollock glides in, but the problem is it's coming from over my shoulder and as I turn my gun, he just turns away too much, and it's a miss. I'm really keen to take one more pollock for the table, so I'm really happy that this one glides in here. Unfortunately, it's not the best shot, but it is a good holding shot. And as I pull this fish up, you can really see how hard these fish fight. Again, that's why I really like to use a spear with a double flopper to maximize the chance of landing these fish. I decide to move back into the shallows and after about 20 minutes of swimming, I'm greeted by an amazing sight. Hundreds of thick-lipped gray mullet schooling up in anticipation to breed. I decide to dive down really, really slowly through them. I'm only in about five meters of water, but it takes me a long time to get to the bottom. I'd rather dive really, really slowly so that once I'm on the bottom, the fish are already there instead of having to wait for them to come back in.
It's not every day you see hundreds of grey mullet this size. These fish are two, possibly some three kilogram thick-lipped grey mullet in fantastic condition, all schooling up, ready to pass on their genes to the next generation. I'm in absolutely no rush to spear one of these mullet. It's an amazing spectacle to witness and I enjoy about 10 dives with these fish, just watching them. They get so, so relaxed with me that some are actually rubbing their bellies on my spear gun and actually brushing against my wetsuit. A few dives later, I have bass coming in from the left and mullet coming in from the right. But again, I really don't want to spear anything because as soon as you fire that gun, the moment is over and I'm just enjoying watching these fish. I do plan on taking a mullet later in the dive, but for the time being, just enjoying what's going on, seeing the nature in front of me and letting these fish go about their business. Finally, as the light starts to go, I take one grey mullet for the table. I didn't actually film a shot, but you can see this is a lovely conditioned fish. I'm really, really excited to cook this one up for the family. Made it back to the car, feeling pretty exhausted, pretty drained, I reckon. We must have swam at least two miles, went quite a long way down the coast with the current and then kind of got the current back, swam out into the deep water, into the shallows again and just kept changing it up between shallow water and deeper water. Um, yeah, the Pollock were in sort of 15 meters as usual. And again, I was seeing the um, herring or whatever, just you may not come uh, through on the GoPro. I could just see uh, glinting and I dive down through the glinting and every time, but a little below there, there was a big pollock. Um, and yeah, every now and then coming across the mullet schools, definitely schooling together to breed at this time of year. So took a mullet too. And I could see it's full of roe. So when we get back to the kitchen, I'm gonna show you how I cook the mullet roe. It may sound a bit disgusting, but it's actually really delicious. And I think it'd be a crime to waste it. So I'm very excited to cook this thick-lipped gray mullet. Reason being, I don't shoot these fish at all really in the spring or summer, as you may have noticed. Reason being, there's lots of other species around at that time of year. As we move into winter, there's fewer other species around, but the mullet around a lot. And they also have the, the gold inside. If you can see here from this shot, you can see some of the roe coming through. And we're about to extract that roe, and I'm going to show you a very simple way of cooking it. The row, you have to be quite careful as you put the knife in, but you don't want to damage it. And I'm hoping I haven't damaged the row too much with the placement of the shot. This is a very, very um, fat, good condition mullet at this time of year. Absolutely. Look at that. When these are fully developed, by about February, these will be about four times the size each. But you can see they're starting to grow. There's just enough in here. Um, I'm gonna do a taste test, but I reckon we will try this again later in the season, if the weather allows, and compare the sort of the size of the gonads and see what happens as, as they grow. These fish are spawning around about February, March time off the south coast here. So they're schooling up now and then the fish will go to the seabed. The females will lay the eggs. Um, they usually lay around about 1 million to 2 million eggs. The male fish will deposit the sperm on top of the eggs. Fertilization will happen and then larvae will form and these will drift. Not many will survive, of course, from, our, from my research. It's about one in a thousand survive. These will then drift inshore and grow and develop. 
But anyway, there's enough here to try a sample. Um, I'll let you know how it tastes and then the rest of the fish is going to be delicious, probably just pan fried. Okay, so what I do is I cut the bag that the eggs are inside or membrane, whatever. And I then scrape the eggs out. Now, traditionally, these um, these are dried and grated on things like pasta, and it's called botarga, but I find this is a much, much quicker and simpler way to make the most of the fish roe um, because it's very, very tasty and you don't want to waste it. So in this particular instance, we've got enough roe to make one of these little roe pancakes. I guarantee in a couple of months time, if we take a mullet, we'd be able to make at least four of these, maybe more. But still, it's a shame to waste it. The plan is with the roe, a bit of salt and pepper, and then I'm going to run it through the egg wash into the flour and then shallow fry it. It's as simple as that. Okay, here we go. It's absolutely delicious. There's no, there's, no other, there's no other way to describe it. It is delicious. Keep that camera rolling, I know you can't stop laughing. It's just... It's like any other fish roe. Yeah, the eggs are... Um, you can tell the grain within, within the roe. There's a nice grain to it. It's just a really lovely taste and texture. Like, honestly shocked at how tasty it is. It's delicious. You have to try this. If you're shooting mullet at this time of year, take the roe out of the sack and fry it because it's absolutely delicious. The camera lady can't stop laughing, so and this may be shaky footage, but mullet roe is delicious. Enjoy it. If you do try this, please comment on my video if you have tried it before and let me know if you enjoy it. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.